Hadith 26. What is Sadaqah? On the authority of Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him who said, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Every joint of a person must perform a charity each day the sun rises. To judge justly between two people is a charity. To help a man with his mount, lifting him onto it or hoisting up his belongings onto it, is a charity. And the good word is a charity. And every step that you take towards the prayer is a charity. And removing a harmful object from the road is a charity. Al-Bukhari and Muslim Assalamu alaikum. It's good to be with you all again in the shade of Ramadan. Uh, SubhanAllah, this is another beautiful hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And it is one that emphasizes a point that is so core to what a Muslim is supposed to be like in dealing with anyone else, any other human being, Muslim or non-Muslim creation in general. Um, this is a hadith that really emphasizes the quality of khidmah, which is service. The hadith talks about how um, every day the sun rises, uh, we are supposed to be involved in some kind of charity. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu um, gives us examples of different charities and he actually starts with the most difficult. He mentions different charities, but he starts uh, with a charity that is most people would avoid doing, and that is to reconcile between others. Two people who are having some kind of a problem or some kind of a fight, it could be uh, reconciling between two people in marriage, a husband and wife who are upset with each other, it could be reconciling between uh, someone who is indebted towards someone else and can't pay the debt, it could be reconciling between um, uh, in a friendship that has, uh, for whatever reason, it's, it's, it's gone bad. And uh, one of the reasons that people tend to avoid reconciling between others is because they sort of feel like, you know, I don't want to get caught up in that crossfire. You know, if I try to help, they're going to both blame me they're going to both say that I'm taking the other person's side. Um, and out of fear of somehow falling into personal loss, people will just avoid. And it's interesting because um, this is, in general, as Muslims, we're told to mind our own business. Uh, we're not supposed to be very curious about things that are, um, that are, that, that, that are not uh, matters that matter to us. They, they're personal business of other people. We're not, we're not really supposed to be um, nosy. But in this situation, we're heavily encouraged in Islam to try to do something beneficial in terms of reconciling hearts. It's a, it's a, it's a good thing to uh, do. It's, a good, it's probably one of the only ways um, we're getting involved in, in the nitty-gritties of details is, is beneficial and praiseworthy in Islam. Uh, it's an act of charity to, to reconcile between two people who are having a problem with each other. And uh, one thing to recognize is there is virtually no worldly benefit in doing so. On a, on a personal level. There is no worldly benefit. Like you may reconcile between two people and those people will get along after that and they may completely forget about you. So you don't do it for yourself. You do it only for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, it's the hardest thing to do. So uh, if you have an opportunity to reconcile in Ramadan, know that there is a wealth of reward that is waiting for such an act of charity. The second uh, example the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi mentions is assisting a man uh, who's trying to get onto his camel or lifting his belongings to him as he's on it. Um, so uh, I want to say go out of your way in the month of Ramadan. And always, to, when you see someone who needs help, whether they're old, whether they're from a different gender, whether they're younger than you or older than you, helping uh, someone else is, uh, is something that is a good thing to be rewarded. The third example the Prophet ﷺ mentions is a good word. Um, and I want to say that it's very easy to say something nice to someone who's nice to us, right? It's very easy to be friendly with people who are going to be friendly with us. It's very hard to say a good, appropriate word in a difficult situation. Whether it's someone who is complaining and um, it's that complaining turns into some kind of backbiting and a good word in that situation is actually to stop them. Or um, a person uh, is involved in some kind of uh, situation where they need your genuine advice and um, you don't have what they need in terms of advice. A good word in that situation is to say, I don't know. That's the best word you can say when you really don't know. Uh, the fourth example the Prophet ﷺ gives is one that's very relevant for us in the month of Ramadan. It's every step to prayer. In the month of Ramadan, we always try to make it there for tarawih and congregation. Now think about where Allah places reward and you will realize where His pleasure lies. And if we're committed to His pleasure, 
then uh, we will do the thing that is most rewarded, re rewarded according to his words versus what um, we may enjoy. So an example of that is uh, the Prophet ﷺ told us that when we pray Isha and Jama'ah, the, the final the night prayer in a congregation, that's like praying the first night in Qiyam. And when we pray Fajr in Jama'ah, that's like playing, praying the, the last part of the night in Qiyam. So the one who prays Aisha and Fajr in Jama'ah is like the one who prayed the whole night in Qiyam. Um, and when you think about it, the, the, the habit that, will, that is most um, be, uh, beneficial for the person after the month of Ramadan is the habit of being able to pray Fajr and Aisha and Jama'ah always. So, uh, for, and the nights are short this year. Please, as much as you can, try to get there for Aisha. If you missed Aisha and made it there for Tarawih, Alhamdulillah, you still got something, but you missed the meal and you showed up for dessert. Um, and this is something important to remember in terms of charity, is, is to, to prioritize what's more rewarding. And the fifth and final example that the Prophet Sallallahu uh, gives is removing something harmful from, from the road. And you take certain ethics from this example as well. One of them is that the Muslim is a citizen who takes ownership over his environment. They're, they never see themselves as a guest. So whether you are um, you know, visiting another country for a short amount of time or you're in your own hometown, um, the environment around you, you feel a sense of personal responsibility. Uh, the other uh, ethic that we take from this is that we are not above cleaning up after someone else's mess. We're not above that. It's not for someone else to clean up because it's not ours. It's actually an honor for us to be the one to, to do something, um, to, to participate in an act of service that will benefit others. And this goes back to another hadith of the 40, where the Prophet ﷺ says that Allah aids his servant so long as his servant aids his brother. So uh, being in this situation of service uh, towards others is not a humiliation. It is, an, it is an honorable act. So I want us to think about this hadith again in terms of the emphasis on service and the emphasis on being proactive about it. Um, you are someone who wants to help. You're not someone who is looking to be helped. Uh, when you, the person who is looking to be helped, there are words that are associated with this. Want, expectation, need, longing. All of these things, when a person is in this state, what they see with their eyes is lost, no matter what they have. But the person who is open to good, but they want to be the one to help, all that they see is gain. It doesn't mean that they don't receive help, it just means that they're not uh, wanting or needing always from others, but they see themselves as being the one who is honored to give. And uh, giving is a reflection, subhanAllah, of gratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, they're thankful for the opportunity to serve. They're not looking for appreciation. لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا. We don't want from you any reward or thanks. When it's done in that spirit, um, then it becomes a very powerful act that binds us together as a community. So in this month of Ramadan, whenever you get an opportunity to serve and to serve others, consider it an honor and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in your aid. Thank you. Jazakum Allah khair.